All right, welcome everybody. We're going to be finishing up in this video our discussion on section 15.3 about the normal distribution. In this video, what you're going to be doing is using cumulative probabilities of normal distributions in order to find the mean and standard deviation of the distribution. Now, you'll see exactly what that means as we go through a couple of examples, and a couple of examples is all it ought to take. Um, let's take a look at one. Here we're saying that the mean yield of grapes per vine in a certain vineyard is 16 pounds. Given that 60% of the vines produce more than 14 and a half pounds, what is the standard deviation of the yields? Now let's think about the types of problems that we've been doing and compare it with this one to see how it's different. What we've been doing is we've been either using the mean, we've either been given the mean and the standard deviation and asked to find the probability of a certain range of values or given a probability we were trying to find the range, or sorry, the value that would give you that probability, a range of values that would give you that probability. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find either the standard deviation or the mean given some cumulative pr probabilities. In this case, that 60% of the vines produce more than 14 and a half pounds. All right. Or in some instances, as in the next example, we'll have to find both the mean and the standard deviation. I'm going to start off with a drawing here to kind of discuss our game plan for how we're going to find the standard deviation. All right, there's our standard curve, normal curve, with uh, the 16, the mean labeled, and then the 14 and a half pounds, for which we know 60% of the vines produce more than that amount. And since 60% of the vines produce more than that amount, I can go ahead and show that on my diagram this way. And now let's talk about the challenges presented with this problem. All right, what you're used to seeing is when you know the mean, as you do here, and the standard deviation, which you don't, if you knew that 60% of the data values were greater than 14 and a, or, or greater than some value, you could find out that value, 14 and a half. Or if you wanted to find out what percentage of the vines yielded more than 14 and a half pounds, you could use the mean and standard deviation to figure out that, that is 60%. But now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the standard deviation, of course. All right, now here's the way that we're going to go about doing that. What we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out somehow, some way, without knowing the standard deviation, how many standard deviations away from the mean this 14 and a half pounds would be. Now you might think that seems kind of impossible, but it's really not going to be impossible if we can kind of translate this information to a standard normal curve. All right? Now here's what I mean. We're going to do this. We're going to treat this data as though it was a normal stand, a standard normal curve where the mean value is zero and we were trying to find some value A over here or really where we're trying to find a Z score because that's ultimately what we're going to try to find. And on a standard normal curve, if we knew that 60% of the data values were greater than some number Z, well, we could figure out the value Z that goes along with it. And then what we can do is we can use what we know about how, how you calculate z-scores to take the data from a standard normal curve right here back to the curve where the mean is 16 and this value right here is 14 and a half. Now, maybe that made some sense to you, maybe not quite yet, but you'll see what I do as I go through and, and do the work. All right, so again, we're assuming for a moment that this, that this data is normal, or rather standard normal. So I'll write that assumption here. We're assuming that this random variable x that represents the yield of grapes per vine is normally distributed with a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And then to follow up on that, we're further assuming that the probability that x is greater than z is equal to 60%. All right, some number Z right there. All right, now we're going to figure out what that value of Z is. Now think about the way you do that. We're going to use inverse normal. And remember when you use inverse normal, it's relevant for your calculator as to what the percentage of the data values is less than the value you're trying to find as compared to what's greater than. So we're going to think of about the fact that 40% of the data values are less than Z as opposed to the fact that 60% are greater than Z. And so here's the inverse norm that we're going to use. 
All right, we're going to type in inverse norm point four comma zero comma one, which tells us that that value z that we were looking for is approximately negative point two five three to three significant figures. Now that tells me that sixty percent of the data values lie above about one quarter standard deviation below the mean, right? That's about negative one fourth standard deviations below the mean. And no matter what the mean and the standard deviation are, that's going to be true for a normal curve. If you get to a z score of negative 0.253, 60% of the data values are going to be greater than that, 40% will be less than that. So we have just learned what the z value is that corresponds with 14.5. So, how do we go back and then find the standard deviation of the actual data set here? Well, now that we know the z value that corresponds with 14.5, we can see how do you calculate the z value for 14.5 if, if you had known the standard deviation and the mean of that data set to begin with. Remember the formula for calculating z values is that the z score or z value is equal to the data value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So here, and please store this value on your calculator or use the last answer that you got whenever you're doing the calculations with it, but we're going to put a negative 0.253 for z, and then our x value that we're concerned with, this is 14.5. And then we're going to do 14 and a half minus the mean 16. And we're going to put that over sigma. And then you see what we've got is a very simple equation to solve in order to find out what the standard deviation is. You'll multiply both sides by sigma. You go ahead and do the subtraction here in the numerator. And then you go ahead and divide both sides by that z value. And it tells you that the standard deviation is about 5.92 pounds of grapes. All right, there you go. So the way we found the standard deviation was by treating the data as if it were a standard normal curve, finding the z-score that corresponded with this value that we knew the probability for, and then plugging that into the z-score formula to actually find out the standard deviation. All right, we're going to increase the difficulty level here for this next example, but the concept is generally the same. All right, ice cream this time. 30% of the flavors in an ice cream shop contain over 25 grams of sugar. Now, let's say that's per scoop, the 25 grams of sugar, while 15% of the flavors contain less than 18 grams per scoop again. Let's find the mean and the standard deviation of the sugar content. All right, well, I'm going to start off by drawing a couple of pictures. In the first picture, I'm going to write the actual data where we don't know the mean, but we do have these two numbers, 25 grams and 18 grams to work with, where we know that 30% of the data values contain more than 25 grams. So this would be 30% right here. And... We know that 15% of the flavors contain less than 18 grams, so 18% of our data would fit right there. 15%, uh, excuse me, not 18%. All right, but without knowing the mean or the standard deviation, we wouldn't be able to do really much with that whole thing. What we're going to have to do in order to calculate the mean and the standard deviation is we're going to, going to have to assume that this was a standard normal curve and let's figure out what value in a standard normal curve would give us would be greater than 15% of all the data values and what value in a standard normal curve would be great or would be greater than all but 30% of the data values okay so here's my standard normal curve that we're going to work with and so we'll say basically we have numbers a and b on a curve, a normal curve where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, for which 15% of the values are less than A and 30% of the values are greater than B. And I'm going to find those values of A and B for that standard normal curve. All right, well, let's go for that. To find the value of A, we'll do this. We can plug in inverse norm with 0.15, 0, 0, 1, 
because 15% of the data values are less than A, and that tells us that A is approximately negative 1.04. I'm going to store that value on my calculator for later use. Then for the value of B, remember you have to use the percentage of the data values that are less than B, so you're going to use 70%, not 30%, whenever you're doing inverse norm. So it'll be like this. And that gives you about 0.524, which I will also store on my calculator for later use. All right, now keep in mind that we're trying to find two different values here, both the mean and the standard deviation. And so since we have two unknowns, we need two equations in order to find out those two unknowns. We're going to be solving a system of equations. And this will be like the last problem, except that we'll just use the z-score equation twice, right? We're going to figure out, oh, now we've figured out that the z-score that corresponds with 18 is about negative 1.04, and the z-score that corresponds with 25 is about positive 0.524. And so we'll use those z-scores to calculate the mean and the standard deviation. Now I'm going to need a lot more space than this, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to a new slide, but hopefully you got this information in front of you still on your paper. All right, so these are the two equations that we're going to use. First, let's do the one for the 18 gram z-score. Remember that z-score was written as negative 1.04 although you've got the more accurate value stored in your calculator. And we can say that equals 18 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. And then our second equation will come from the second z-score that we calculated for the 25 gram sample. We wrote that that was 0.524, but we have a more accurate value stored in our calculator. And that would equal then 25 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. All right. So substitution method is really the way that we're going to go here. What I would like to do is I would like to solve both of these equations for the exact same variable. And the easiest variable to solve it for is probably mu. And you'll see kind of why that is. So let's go ahead and multiply each equation by sigma on both sides because that will get rid of the denominator. So on the left equation that will give us negative 1.04 sigma equals 18 minus mu and then if I add mu to both sides and add negative or add positive 1.04 sigma to both sides I get mu is equal to 18 plus 1.04 sigma all right so I got that by itself and then same idea on the other equation multiply both sides by sigma to get rid of the denominator then add mu and subtract 0.524 sigma from both sides and get mu equals 25 minus 0.524 sigma. All right, and now as soon as we get to this point, since we have two values for mu here and here, we know that those have to be equivalent to one another, and so we can equate them and we'll end up with the standard deviation. All right, let's get all our sigmas over here on the left so they can be positive, and let's subtract 18 from both sides. The only thing I need to remind you of is that I don't want you using 1.04 and negative 0.524. I want you to using the more accurate values that are stored in your calculator, just so our answer is as accurate as possible. All right, and so after doing so, you will get this. To three significant figures, 1.56 sigma equals 7, and so the standard deviation would be 7 divided by the value you have for this on your calculator, which is approximately 4.48. All right, so we now know the standard deviation would be about 4.48 grams of sugar per scoop of ice cream in this store. Then we're going to find the mean simply by plugging that into either one of these two equations that we had up here. So let's just say we take this equation where everything's positive and plug it in. Remembering to use the more accurate values for the 1.04 that you had and the mu yeah, the sigma that you had before on your calculator, and we get about 22.6 grams as being the mean. Alright. So you've seen how to use cumulative probabilities in a normal distribution in order to find the mean and the standard deviation, sometimes both of them in the same problem. That's it, guys. That's our chapter on standard distribution and well random variables.
all together, actually. Thanks for all your hard work in the chapter. Hope this has been a really useful resource for you. Later.